Hi there, my name's Kevin Kumar, and I was wrongfully imprisoned in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. There are so many more innocent people in prison than people realize. When I got arrested, I kept on saying I was innocent. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's not fair that he had to stand in that courtroom and accept guilt for something that he didn't do. There's no physical evidence linking him to this crime. And there was absolutely no investigation. The two entities that were responsible for wrongfully imprisoning me was the Real Estate Council of Alberta and the Court of Queen's Bench, Alberta. The Real Estate Council of Alberta only governs realtors, mortgage brokers, and appraisers. We created a commission-free system that was going to put realtors out of business. Now keep in mind, realtors going out of business would mean that the ones who govern them would become obsolete, who is the Real Estate Council of Alberta. Any of us that have sold the house and had to use a realtor, you know it costs tens of thousands of dollars of commissions. So you see, when we brought a commission-free system to the Canadian marketplace, of course it was embraced. Who wants to pay those outrageous commissions when you can get it commission-free? So here, we're gonna give you a little clip we made on the commission-free system, just to give you an idea of how it works. Take a look at this. Welcome to NoCommissionSystem.com. Are you a for sale by owner, selling your house on your own, trying to save tens of thousands of dollars on those huge real estate fees? We have the solution. Use a private lender. Excuse me, but how can a private lender help me save tens of thousands of dollars in real estate fees when selling my home? It's simple. When using a private lender, you'll be able to place as the header on your advertising. Bad, bad credit, credit, no, no problem. problem. Zero, Zero down, down, no, no problem. problem. Buy, Buy this house. house. This will obviously create more interest in your home having your advertising stand out from the others. This will have many more buyers calling your ad using your advertising dollars to its fullest potential. In general, the rule of thumb when selling a home is the more people calling your ad, the quicker you will sell your house. So you can see how placing bad, bad credit, credit, no, no problem, problem, zero, zero down, down, no, no problem, problem. Buy, buy this, this house. house will produce many more buyers calling your ad. Actually, yes I do. The only problem you have now is how to handle all of your new buyer leads from your new and improved advertising. What a great problem to have when selling your home commission free. It sure is. Now that we agree, so that little ad got a whole lot of attention and this is why the Real Estate Council of Alberta slandered myself and another gentleman, Derek Johnson. In order to prove that the Real Estate Council of Alberta does not govern just individuals buying and selling real estate, so if you use an offer to purchase, a Canadian offer to purchase, to buy a home and there's no realtor or mortgage broker involved, well, that would mean that the Real Estate Council of Alberta does not govern that deal because there's no realtor or mortgage broker involved. To prove this, we actually went into the Real Estate Act of Alberta to see and prove and outline where it says that the Real Estate Council of Alberta does not govern individuals buying and selling homes. They only govern Realtors, mortgage brokers, and appraisers. Take a look at this. So let's take a look at the Real Estate Act of Alberta. So, um, as we scroll down here, um, you see how long this thing is, and we're gonna decide and take a look at who is it that they really govern? Do they govern individuals who are simply buying and selling real estate. Now keep in mind who they really govern is just mortgage brokers, realtors, and appraisers. And we're gonna show you um, exactly the section here 
and we're coming up to it. Uh, application to uh, 2.1 here. This act, as it relates to trading in real estate, does not apply to, and they list some individuals here, but probably the biggest one here to look at is a person who acquires real estate or any interest in real estate or who disposes of real estate owned by that person or in which the person has substantial interest. So you see, this is what happens right here is when a person goes and buys real estate with an offer to purchase, a Canadian offer to purchase, that would mean that the Real Estate Council of Alberta does not govern them. So that's pretty straightforward. This act, as it relates to trading in real estate, does not apply to a person. And that's because it only applies to mortgage brokers, realtors, and appraisers. And that's straight from the Real Estate Act of Alberta. You guys have a great day. We'll continue on here. So I can't get much more clear than that. Now keep in mind, the realtor, the word realtor is an actual trademark name. Hi, I'm Mark, the valiant defender of the National Association of Realtors Trademark. So you see, if you have a trademark name and they're saying that no one can compete against that trademark, I mean, by definition, that would be no longer a capitalist society because that's what makes a capitalist society work, is that there's competition, therefore everybody has to better their service. If there's only one entity, well that's called a monopoly, that would be violating the monopoly laws and the competition laws. Okay guys, so now that we know the Real Estate Council of Alberta does not govern Canadians just buying and selling real estate, they only govern realtors, mortgage brokers, and appraisers, now, we also know that the trademark name Realtor, well, I mean, the word Realtor is a trademark name, therefore they should have competition. Well, now we're gonna move on to a news article about a gentleman named Derek Johnson, and the article says, man posing as Realtor. the only way to pose as a realtor is to take a MLS listing contract and try and have somebody sign it to list your their home but you wouldn't be able to list it on the real system because you would not be a realtor so posing as a realtor would make no sense with a seller and of course with a buyer posing as a realtor would mean that you'd be driving around to houses with somebody in their back seat um, and driving to homes that you cannot get into, you cannot gain access to because you do not have a realtor key to get in or a lending. Okay, so you see, it's ridiculous. Now, if someone is buying and selling real estate with a offer to purchase, a Canadian offer to purchase, then they are by definition screaming out saying that I'm not a realtor because if I was a realtor, I'd be using a listing group. And because we are just Canadian business people buying and selling homes using Canadian offer to purchases. So this next article is as slanderous as it comes. Let's take a look at it. Here we are um, at a very slanderous um, article that the Calgary Herald put out. And it says here from Brian Labby. Brian Labby was the one, the reporter. And it says here, Calgary's Derek Johnson fine for posing as a realtor. Now, guys, now that we've looked at the, um, at the Real Estate Act of Alberta, seeing that they do not govern just people buying and selling real estate they only govern realtors mortgage brokers and appraisers this heading is very inaccurate and very slanderous because posing as a realtor how would you do that well the only way to pose as a realtor is to i guess approach a seller and tell them that you're going to list their home on the mls system because the only way to pose as a realtor is to try and get somebody to
to sign an MLS listing contract. If you are asking them to sign an offer to purchase, a Canadian offer to purchase, you are definitely not posing as a realtor. You would be just acting as a person investing in real estate. Okay, so that is a very, very slanderous um, headline. Now, if we go down here a little bit further, it says here that he was fined. Now, how can somebody send out administrative fines? How can an organization send out administrative fines to people who are not part of their organization? So again, this is so slanderous. They're, they're making believe this man went out and pretended to be a realtor where all he was doing was buying and selling real estate with a Canadian offer to purchase. Now, of course, um, you know, they, they were getting a whole lot of the uh, market. So of course they started slandering him. So as I said before, these administrative fines they're talking about, they are absolutely bogus. If Derek signed a contract stating that he was going to be part of their organization as a realtor, or as a mortgage broker, or as an appraiser, then yes, definitely he could be fined because that would be breach of contract because when he signed up for those organizations, he would have um, agreed that if he breaks any of these administrative rules that he would be fined, but he never did that. And I know that Derek asked, um, the Real Estate Council of Alberta um, for the contract that he apparently signed and they could not produce any kind of contract stating that he signed and consented for them to govern him in exchange for benefits. So that was pretty slanderous, all right? So let's move on here. Now this actually ends in a good happy ending. What happens is that we actually complained to the provincial government through MLAs. And what happened is that they ended up firing the Real Estate Council of Alberta, all the board members. <laughs> what the Real Estate Council of Alberta is doing is very dysfunctional. Now, the reason I use the term dysfunctional is because the Alberta government actually came in and they actually fired all of the Real Estate Council of Alberta's board members. So take a look at this. As we said, um, we did bring our complaints to the government of, of Alberta. Uh, we definitely didn't bring our complaints to uh, the Court of Queen's Bench of Alberta any longer. They're the ones who were part of uh, wrongfully imprisoning, imprisoning us for uh, myself and Derek Johnson. So, as I said, we went through um, Alberta government and we made some complaints with many other people who were complaining about Real Estate Council of Alberta. So, what did they do here? Alberta government website puts up ending real estate regu regulatory dysfunction. Okay, and if we take a look at the overview, a third party review completed in late spring of 2019 found significant concerns with the performance of the Real Estate Council of Alberta, RECA, um, and identified the need for urgent governance reform. It was the first formal review of the RECA conducted under the authority of the Real Estate Act. So, urgent government reform, because they found a whole lot of things that they were doing wrong um, over and above what they did to us. But um, it just continues on here. But to maybe take a look at another perspective here, it is the Toronto Star, very reputable um, paper and it says Alberta plans to fire entire real estate council board orders total overhaul for provincial real estate governing body. So um, here is Nate Glubush. Um, he is a service Alberta minister. So Edmonton, Alberta's real estate regulatory body will receive a complete overhaul as the government has announced that it tends to fire the entire real estate council of Alberta um, of allegations of misconduct going back to dating back to 2016. So here's Nate Glubush. Um, he is a service Alberta minister and he is agreeing that the members of the Real Estate Council of Alberta, which oversees the issuing of real estate licenses and consumer complaints through amendments to the provincial 
Real Estate Act. Glubish proposed these amendments and the House will be done. It says here that, um, you know, Nate, Nate Glubish says, we have a huge task ahead to solve this mess. Um, you know, he also follows up saying that by every measure, the Real Estate Council of Alberta has received a failing grade. Okay, guys, so these are the people we're dealing with that um, basically we're saying that they govern um, us and they can put sanctions on us. And the truth of the matter is they only govern realtors, mortgage brokers, and appraisers. And the reason Rika did it is, of course, if we went and uh, took over the real estate market, they would have, um, realtors would be obsolete. And of course, Rika would have nobody to govern. So that would make them obsolete. The Real Estate Council of Alberta has no credibility when it comes to any of this. So that is the scoop. That is what happened at the Real Estate Council of Alberta. By the end of it, the Alberta government was very clear that they were not doing their job. Now, let's move on to the Court of Queen's Bench. What happened with the Court of Queen's Bench now? we were doing the commission free system project we were also doing a foreclosure project now you see the court of queen's bench sells judgments to the world market and does not tell anybody so don't take my word for it here is some proof that we took off the internet that the court of queen's bench alberta is a trading listed entity on the world market take a look at this Okay guys, so let's uh, verify the Court of Queen's Bench is a trading entity on the world market. So we just punched in Court of Queen's Bench Bloomberg into Google and it comes up with Court of Queen's Bench Alberta stock price quote. Okay, so um, if we click on that, you're gonna see it comes to Bloomberg and Bloomberg is a huge player in the world stock market and on their website, it's very clear Court of Queen's Bench, and it even says about trading. Okay, so there you go. That absolutely is proof that the Court of Queen's Bench, Calgary, and all the other Canadian court, courts are trading entities on the world market. And that should make you wonder about the whole thing. If they are selling judgments and making a profit off of it, that is something to be looked at. So there you go. As you see, the Court of Queen's Bench and all courts are actually listed on the world market as trading entities. Now, here's the big conflict of interest we have here. With the Security Exchange Commissions, it's very clear that they must have the shareholders' best interests in mind. So when the judges place judgments on the Canadians, they're actually creating a financial instrument that they can sell. So there's a huge conflict of interest there. The more judgments they put on the Canadian people, the more money they make. And so their main purpose should be to make sure they are resolving conflict in a fair manner, not just simply making more money, the more judgments they get, the more money they make. That is a huge conflict of interest. When you start mentioning things like this, the Court of Queen's Bench is not too happy with you. So you see, what happened is that we were doing foreclosures, and of course, when a bank is foreclosing on a Canadian, they go to court. It is a court process. Now you see, the banks are taking the mortgages, the debt, selling them to the world market, and not telling anyone. Let's say three years goes by, and you go into foreclosure, the bank already sold the debt, so that means they got paid, so they got paid once. Now, if they come and take the house from you and you don't ask the right questions, well, that means they just got paid twice. Now, to make things even worse is that when you end up in court, the Canadian who's being foreclosed on is going to get a judgment placed on them for, let's say, $300,000, $400,000, whatever the house was worth. And what ends up happening is that 
the judge now takes the judgment that's created that day and sells it to the world market and now they collect money. So what we have is the bank taking the mortgage, selling it, taking the house, getting paid twice. And then we have a paid off referee, which would be the judge now, who is creating a judgment in order to create a financial instrument that day. A judgment is a financial instrument that they take and sell to the world market and they get paid. And the only one who doesn't, who's left out in the cold is the Canadian homeowner. So you see, when we started bringing this to everyone's attention, well, let me tell you, they weren't happy with us. But let me show you how we went about doing it. It was quite creative. Take a look at this. Why do the judges act the way they do? Why do the lawyers act the way they do? Most people, once we give them this information, it goes, oh, that makes sense now. The Court of Queen's bench sells judgments and debt on the world market because they're interacting with your person as your chief executive officer status. They're selling judgments. What does that mean? The world market buys judgments. Well, what do they do with it after? Well, that's what the world markets are for. They actually sell judgments to the world market. It's been around forever. We're just becoming conscious and aware of it as the private sector. The Court of Queen's Bench is listed on the world market. If they're listed on the world market, they have a conflict of interest, conflict of interest. Okay guys, so this conflict of interest should be pretty clear to you at this point. If you are creating judgments and selling them to the world market, well the more judgments you put on the Canadian people is the more money you make. That is a huge conflict of interest when you're supposed to be resolving conflict in a fair manner, uh, making sure that's the foremost, not making money. Now that you know why the Real Estate Council of Alberta slandered myself and Derek Johnson, we created a commission-free system that was going to make them obsolete because if there was no realtors to govern any longer, they would be obsolete. And we just finished covering why the Court of Queen's bench had our number because we were mentioning things such as their major conflict of interest in selling judgments to the world market, whereas they're supposed to be treating everybody fairly in their conflict resolution. Kevin Kumar was charged for fraud, but they forget to mention that Kevin Kumar was found innocent at the preliminary trials. So before you go into any trial from the Canadian courts, what happens is that they do a pretrial to see if they have enough evidence to go to a trial. So we went to pretrial and guess what? And I'm going to show you here right now. Here is the paperwork that states very clearly, I was found innocent from the British Columbia Law Courts, Kelowna Supreme Criminal Court Registry. It says here that uh, versus Kevin Anthony Kumar says here, please be advised that I am directing a stay of proceedings with respect to the above noted matter. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me. So at the preliminary trials, after the preliminary trials, this is what was sent out. I was found innocent. They stayed it because of lack of evidence, because it was not true. There was no evidence that I did anything wrong or fraudulent and collected money through deceit. Okay, that says a lot there. Thanks. together to conspire in order to put two Canadians, myself and Derek Johnson, wrongfully imprisoned for civil contempt of court. This had nothing to do with criminal, but this had to do with civil contempt of court and wrongful imprisonment. 
Let's take a look at this. I know you're going to find this amazing.